shadow of Fu Manchu. Based on the stories by Tex Roma. call, presumably from a nearby patient, interrupts a conversation between Dr. Petrie and Sir Graham Guthrie. Dr. Petrie leaves his visitor, asking him to wait his return. The phone call proves to be false. On his return home, Dr. Petrie finds Nayland Smith awaiting him. Sir Graham has vanished. Smith is convinced the phone call was a trick to get Dr. Petrie away, while agents of Fu Manchu kidnapped Graham Guthrie. In a limousine, they follow the kidnapped car to a deserted warehouse, where they discover Sir Graham being tortured by Fu Manchu. They also find Karame, whom they toss safely on the way to Egypt. Breaking into the torture chamber, Smith kills one of Fu Manchu's henchmen, while Petrie turns to help Sir Graham. Steady, Sir Graham. I'll have you out of this thing in a moment. Oh, thank heaven, Petrie. Unscrew the beast of the thing. I was very near to weakening. Oh. He fainted, Nayland. Good job he has. I wonder the thing didn't kill him. That fiendish contrivance of Tony's flesh. Well, where is Fu Manchu? God, he's gotten out. He must have slipped past you. With only the one door and no windows in the place? No, Petrie. He wasn't in here. He must have been. I heard him plainly. His voice came from this room. Then look for yourself. Not a stick of furniture, no place for him to conceal himself. No trap doors. It's uncanny, Nayland. With all his power, his knowledge of science and chemistry, he can't make himself invisible. I, Joe. Stay with Sir Graham. I'll be back in a moment. No, no, I, I know nothing, nothing. Is that the answer, Graham? Uh, it's all over. Yes, thank you. Uh, oh, thanks, Petrie. He got away. I'm afraid so. Well, I still. You're in pretty bad shape. No, no, I'm all right. It was a mere thing, though. Smith, where is he? In another part of the building, searching for Fu Manchu. I, uh, I understand now, Sir Graham, what you were trying to tell me back in my office about Karamir. It was difficult, Petrie. If I had not been for that call for you, I should have gotten it out somehow. Blasted, Petrie, they've gone. Karame, the room where we left her is deserted. Either with or against her will, she went with him. Mr. Graham, was Fu Manchu in this room with you? I know. No one but that devil on the floor there twisted the screws on this fiendish contrivance. His wired jacket, Fu Manchu called it. You didn't see him at any time? Not while he was questioning you? No, I heard only his voice. Seemed to come from that side of the room. Oh. Over here? Yes. That wall. I heard... Oh. No wonder you didn't see him. That screen in the wall. He stood in the room beyond and spoke through it. Come out to have missed him by so little. That's odd. Why wasn't he in the room, Mr. Graham? Obvious, Petrie. Think. He'd evidently promised Sir Graham his freedom, his life. If he'd divulge the name of his correspondent. Right, Sir Graham? Yes, that's quite true. And he'd have kept his word. It's a sidelight on his character, Petrie. You've never seen Fu Manchu, Sir Graham? Never. 
Hmm. I'm almost positive I haven't heard his voice, or one very like it, somewhere in the past. That strange intonation, that culture diction. For the life of me, I can't place it. I thought so. You see, Petrie? Sir Graham knows certain parts of the audience better than you and I know Piccadilly. Probably if he saw Fu Manchu, he'd recognize him for whom he really is. It's quite obvious the doctor wished to avoid such recognition. Of course. Therefore, the screen. Exactly. Well, Petrie, it's another defeat for us. The shadow of Fu Manchu still hovers over London. You taken care of Sir Graham? He's in the West End Hospital. The lacerations and cuts are painful, but he'll be all right in a day or two. I'll make arrangements to guard the place. I can't have Guthrie falling into Fu Manchu's hands again. Heaven help him if he does. But uh, Yen Fan Yan, you don't know him, Malan? By name only. He's a power in the Central Orient. Once or twice, I've run across evidences of that power. He is one of the seven. The black poppy's inner circle. Not another Fu Manchu. Oh, no. Although he probably ranks high among the heads of the Oriental group, he's far from being the cold-blooded killer that Dr. Fu is. But Guthrie spoke as if Yen Fan Yat were an intimate friend of his. A soldier's Elfin. Yes. I'd like to know what he's doing in Berlin, though. I think I'd better get in touch with von Kramer. Von Kramer? A member of the German Secret Service. Oh. An excellent operative and one of my few friends. We've worked together in the East on several occasions, I see. You, uh, you haven't been able to find any clue as to the whereabouts of uh, Karamek. When we locate Fu Manchu, old chap, we shall have found Karamek. Needless to say, I'm making every effort to... Oh, now what's up? But this time of night, after 11. Well, I'll answer the door. I'll go to my bedroom in case it's someone for you. I'm sorry, Dr. Petrie, to be calling you this time of night. Oh, Forsyth. Come in, man. Come in. Uh, I saw a light in your study and thought you might be up. My ship docked late and I couldn't get here sooner. Oh, that's perfectly all right. What's the trouble? It's my hand. I'd like you to have a look at it. I cut it rather badly on the run in from the Orient. No position aboard a freighter, you know. Well, let's see. Hmm. Looks bad, Forsyth. Signs of poisoning. Now sit down there. Have it treated in a moment. Thank you. There we are. Uh, when do you sail again? A week from tomorrow. Well, I'd like you to come in once or twice. I want to look at this hand. Well, thanks, Doctor. Yes, I'll manage to drop in before we sail. <laughs> Joe, that's strange. What strange? Huh. I've been seeing you for a year or two off and on, but you never stirred at me in this fashion. Anything wrong? <laughs> oh, no, no, nothing like that. I was merely thinking of your uncanny resemblance to a friend of mine. If you had lighter hair and a mustache, you'd be the perfect image of my friend Smith. Features, build, even to your walk. <laughs> Now, I've heard we all have our doubles, Doctor. Yes. Well, there you are. That'll do for tonight. Thanks, Well, I'll be running on. I'll manage to run in a couple of times before the end of the week. Yes, do that, do that. And use that hand as little as possible for the next few days. Right. Good night, Doctor. And good night, Father. Joe, that's certainly amazing. I nail him. How the deuce are you sitting in a dark room? Come here and watch. Huh. What is it? I don't know. What's that clump of elms over there in the park? Oh, where's your patient? Eh? Oh, why, he must be... Oh, well, there he is, standing at the gate. Don't clean out the window. Oh, for heaven's sake, why not? I'll tell you presently. You saw him? Yes. Yes, I can't make out what he's doing. He's standing there at the gate. He's and... seen it, too. Watch those elms. Ah, there it is again. See it? Ah, that's strange. You mean that vaporous blue light close to the ground? Yes, yes. It kind of flares up. Now it's rising higher. There. Died away again. I've been watching it for some time. Ghostly looking. What is it? Don't ask me, old man. I don't know. Oh, there goes your patient. Crossing the road. He's going to investigate. We must stop him, Petrie. Well, I'll call him. Not the sound. Come along. We'll catch up with him. Out through the side entrance. Hurry. We mustn't let Pietro have come from this house. So don't cross the road directly. I'll walk there and cross. You go below. Out of the light of the street lamp. Cross then and run for those elms. I wonder what that glow could be. Devil. Is he dead? Yes, I'm afraid so, Nathan. Hmm? 
This sailor's met the death designed for me, Petrie. See, and Bill, even his walk, he resembled me. Great Scott. I told him that for five minutes. Here, turn him over on his back. Yeah. Look him over. I'll hold the flash. Good heaven. Look at his face. Yes, those wounds, irregular. In small clusters. As if made by the claws of a bird. Horrible deep scratches. Like tattoo marks. Uh, the injured surface is bloated. It's poison, Nayland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on here? What are your devils done? By the saints, I'll... Stop that whistle. Flash your lantern here and don't ask foolish questions. I'll read this. If you have any further doubts, you may call Inspector Weymouth of Scotland Yard from this gentleman's house. Oh, I'm sorry, Inspector. I, I didn't know. It's all right. Help us carry him. We'll keep out of the light, Petrie, and... Constable, this mustn't get into the press, you understand? I, I understand, sir. Mom's the word. We'll take him to the house. Now, let's get along with it. Right, sir. Make a thorough in examination, Petrie. Are you, Constable, phone for an ambulance as quickly as possible. Yes, sir. Neil, you're not going out there again. Yes, I'll be all right. I'm taking the flash. The Constable's lantern, too. Keep him here until I return. Take the Constable with you, man. There's something out there. No, you... no, he'll only be in the way. Oh, uh, Constable, remain here with Dr. Petrie until the ambulance arrives anyway. I'm taking your lantern with you. Right, sir. Uh, turn on that light over the table, please. Yes, sir. Hey, the saints, sir. The poor devil looks as if he'd struck his head in a meat grinder. How are them cuts made? Fractures of some sort. The form of elongated puncture. Clusters. Pear-shaped. Yeah. How did it happen, sir? Did he say anything? Only a cry for help. Tried to speak. Mm, muscles of articulation must have been affected almost instantly. By Jove, the sea fan. A poison flower. What's that, sir? A flower? Hey, what's the sea fan? Uh, uh, oh, nothing, Constable, nothing. Uh, lower that light a bit more, will you? And hand me the box of cotton. Uh. How's that, sir? Uh, doctor, uh, look at the window there. Hey, uh, what are you doing out there? Look out, man! Hand on the floor! Oh. 